Oh, hello, a very good evening to you. It's uh, Scotty McClue here, the World's Top Broadcaster, Sunday night. Nothing gets past me at all, of course. And a very, very warm welcome to Scotty McClue live globally on Facebook Live, the world's great broadcast platform. Welcome, 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 I say. Great to have you with us. And, of course, this is the start of our one-hour show, show number 45. And uh, we've got one hour, one hour of superb scintillating information, education and entertainment for the nation. So I hope you'll join me for every single second of that hour because we have so much to talk about and so little time to do it in. If you've just joined us, a very, very warm welcome to you, of course. Dinky-doo, Robert, nice to have you with us. And hi, Scotty, Dinky-doo, Jamie Michael Wells, lovely to have everybody there. Very, very important. Lots to talk about tonight, guys. So tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue live on Facebook Live. That's the big one. That's the one everyone's talking about. That's the one everyone is listening to. Also, a very, very warm welcome to all the delegates at the Edinburgh International Television Festival who I believe are joining us tonight. Marvellous. Welcome, 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 I say. All the important people in television. Well, you've come to the right place because Scotty McClure, the world's top broadcaster, can tell you how people are changing the way that they receive and view and consume television. Good evening, Scotty, says Steve Burrows. Scotty boy, how's it hanging? A wee shout for my buddy, uh, Skids and Kev McNally. Good evening, wee laddie. Where's your bonnet? Uh, Helen Wallace is watching. John Hodgson, Scotty. How do, how do, John Hodgson? You are a very, very fine broadcaster, John. Now, um, I'm going to put a proposition to you. It's a very, very warm night at McClue Towers, and the studio is roasting hot. So I have divested myself thus of my jacket, and also you, some of you may notice, I've divested myself thus of my bonnet. Now, the only thing is something of a concession to my age, because it gives you a swatch at the full bit. This is what I look like now. If you don't like it, do not panic, because we can take steps to sort that out. We can amend the situation, and we can put the bonnet back on. All right? Uh, marvellous. Jim Clark there. So I was a wee bit late. I was watching Victoria, says Angie Thompson. Angie, you're quite right to be watching Victoria. A marvellous setup. She came to the throne in 1837, of course, and um, she wouldn't be very old. I'm just trying to think. She'd be 19 yeah, she'll be 19. There, yeah, she was born in 1819. Ben Fosachale. Hello, Scotty. Hello, Ben. No bonnet, no Scotty, says Scott Biddy. Adrienne Murphy is watching. Right, guys, you'll have to tell me. What do you think of the no bonnet look? Are you up for it? Or is it too much? Is it too frightening? So there we go. I don't know why you're hot. You have loads of fans. Ah, ha, ha. George Raffin, you funny, funny man. A shout out for the missus, Jennifer Devlin Powell. Jennifer, dinky do, you're the luckiest lady in the world because you're married to Robert. Robert, you're the luckiest man in the world because you're married to Jennifer. But then you knew that. Anyway, stay as you are, Scotty. Do you mean as I am just now or as I am with the bonnet? Hello from Tullibody, says Steve McLaurin. Dinky do, Steve. And a very, very warm welcome to Scotty McClure's massive, mighty, mega Facebook Live program. Great Yorkshire Radio has just shared the video. We appreciate it. Great Yorkshire Radio. Now, guys, if you find that your local radio station has been holding out on you recently and they haven't been playing ball and uh, you're just getting a few records, as I call them, a few songs, a few tunes, C-H-O-O-N-S, a few tunes in a row, and it's become a jukebox that you can actually get on your iPod, then what I would say to you is uh, tune in to Great Yorkshire Radio. Radio just as it should be. Fantastic. What's the topic tonight, Scott? This is Gary Crossan. Alex Duff's watching. As you are now, says Steve Burrows. Thank you, Steve, because it is very hot, even although I have loads of fans. Now, the topic for tonight, equality. 
equal pay for women, equality for women. Women want uh, all the men's jobs, right? You'll find, well, we were actually looking for a woman for the job, to be honest with you. Uh, now, uh, although you cannot have that, Tracy Campbell, hi, Scotty. Hi, Tracy. Uh, although you can't have that, I like the non-budget look, says Robert Devlin. Gerald Mackay Mackay, why not on that station, Scotty? Well, there we are. Well, I may well, you know, there's all sorts of things are possible. I would need to speak to the senior management and ask if they could cope with Scotty McClue live. Uh, but there we are. But we'll look at that. Um, I've heard of Hide the Thimble. No, Hide the Bunnet. Didn't you get arrested the last time you made a proposition, Scotty? Ian Walker, I wouldn't be making a proposition to you, La. I'll tell you that. For nothing. Right, so there we are. Equality. Yes, Ali Haining's watching. Yes, we're talking about equality. Now, what I would like to say about it is why don't we make the switch? In other words, what I'm talking about here is retrain all the women to do all the men's jobs, and then the men, we guys, can sit at home and look glam watching the daytime television. We'd have to have a programme, I'd have to host it, called Loose Men. And um, we could do that, I'm quite sure. And, um, you know, we could have uh, all, the, all the other daytime television men on it, though, and get the women doing all the jobs. So you ring for the plumber, woman plumber comes. You ring to get the gutters cleaned out, woman gutter clean out person comes, right? A gutter or cleaner outer. She appears, all right. Women joiner comes and fits your kitchen. All that sort of stuff, really quality. And we could just glam up. So there we are. Equality is earned, not learned. I think Bob Dylan said that, Zine Walker. He probably did, Ian. Bob Dylan said quite a lot, actually. Very, very good. Yes, yes, yes. Would we have to iron clothes, says a very concerned Adam Wales. No, I don't think so, Adam. I mean, you know, we could do the old drip dry, hang it up, hanging it from the kitchen, all the rest of it, and putting our smalls all over the bedroom. That sort of stuff. We could do the lot. Loose Scotty talks, says Gerald Mackay Mackay. So there we are. Women with mini skirts back in the day, 20 years ago. Yes, they had the mini skirts where the men could put on the mini kilts. And when the women can home from work, who knows what could be waiting for them. So there we are. Uh, and uh, women should stay at home and do the housework, says Steve Burrows. Steve, this is the 21st century. We're in 2017. The men could do a wee bit of the high dusting. You get these um, dusters now. I've got them um, static or anti-static or whatever they're called. And you can flick them over everything and they take the dust off. There's nothing to a women's work at home now. Different when they used to scrub the floors and get the deal table scrubbed down with hot water and disinfectant. And all that's away. That's away, Sal. Away. Who's going to wash my necks? Says Ryan Moore. So there you are. I think you'll have to wash your in next, Ryan. Does that mean that we need to give the wife two dead rabbits instead of one? Says Ian Walker. Well, there you are. You're a very generous man, Ian. As long as you're um, hunting for the pot. Only joking, says Steve Burrows. Joking about what, Steve? Joking about McClure not having his bonnet on? Or what was going on? Single mothers, uh, as you do. Go the full hog. Well, you could have the single fathers. So there we are. Women's library with men's uniforms on. There we are. And uh, yes, excellent. So we could look at that. Would you be up for that? Send me funny faces. Send me lots and lots of thumbs up. Lots and lots of different things. And uh, what time have we got? Time for a share soon. Tell 10. Can you get typing, guys? Type, 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 type. type. And um, say, I am watching Scotty McClure live on Facebook Live right now. Also, a very warm welcome to all our viewers who are attending the Edinburgh International Television Festival right now. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Wow. 20 years ago, old fella. Yes, it was. Absolutely, it was 20 years since Scotty McClure was last on Scott FM. Richie McCusker's watching Dinky Doo Richie. Lovely to have you with us. If women want equality, it swings both ways. An equal pension age. So are you saying men should get the pension at 60? 
I've always been taught by my mother to always help around the house. I'm now 51 and I still help, says Ali Henning. Good for you, Ali. You can't beat that. Love you, Scotty. And a big kiss from Richie McCusker. Dinky do, Richie McCusker. You're very welcome. Love you too. And uh, you never said that in Scott FM, says Rab Hill. No, Rab. But this is the new improved McClure, you see. What we're doing is looking at switching it round and getting the women to do the men's job. So you take your car in, there's a woman in reception, she's got the overalls on, you know, a wee bit of oil round the chops, all that sort of stuff. She goes, right, if you just leave it with us, I'll have a look at that, actually. It sounds to me like brakes, yeah, all that stuff. And you pick it up, and there we go. Uh, Scott Beadle Dinky Doer. My evenings were spent tuning into your show on Hallam FM. The dropped bums. Yes, if you go to Yorkshire and you look at the ladies' bottoms, right now, I don't mean in any perverted way, just a, a, a mannerly glance, a, a glance of admiration. Let's call it that, a glance of admiration. Then you'll find that they're a good four inches lower than the national average. So there you are. And the ladies in Yorkshire would make good burglars because the bottoms would wipe out the footprints. Love the first 15 minutes of these old Scott FM shows. Did you only hear the first 15 minutes? You should have heard the three hours, Jamie. Best presenter ever, says Richie. I thank you, Richie. That's very, very kind of you. And the Barnsley bums, says Adam Wheels. Yes, the ladies from Barnsley and the dropped bottoms. So there you are, the Barnsley bum lifter. It was a sort of arrangement I designed with leather straps and rubber and all sorts of things. And the lassie pulls it on like a pair of breeks, like a lider hosen, fastens it up over her shoulders, and then it lifts her bum. So there we are. If I said you have lovely eyes, I'd get six months, says Rab Hills. Yes, six months of admiration. Scotty, we're a wee fox visitor tonight. I put some chicken out for it, says Angie Thompson. Yes, have you seen the latest wee visitor to McClue Towers? So there you are. My hoover broke down. It was not sucking. My hoover broke down. It was not sucking. So there we go. Very, very interesting. Yes, it was not sucking. It broke down. I don't know. I got my wife a new belt and a bag for Christmas. I remember that. The hoover's working great. Uh, David Ark, says Michael McGregor. Yes, Alpha James Wright. Scotty, on YouTube you can be heard to say women should be in the house and keeping their men puffed out. What's changed? Nothing. Right? They should keep their men puffed out. It's very interesting. I heard about uh, a situation in America. And the guy fancied getting, um, how can I put this delicately, a lady um, who does a lot of her work at night, right? So he, he, he was doing this. He told his missus he was just nipping out. And, um, you know, he, uh, he met at some motel this lady of the evening. And the lady of the evening turned out to be his missus. And apparently they had a huge blow up over it. <laughs> Oh, why are you sitting at Mrs. McClure, Scotty? <laughs> there you go. Uh, Sharon Holmes is watching. Thank you, Sharon. Lovely to have you with us. If you've just joined us, you're watching Scotty McClure, the world's top broadcaster, saying dinky do just for you. Live on Facebook Live, one of the world's great broadcast platforms. Excellent. Lovely to have you with us. Thank you for subscribing on YouTube. We're well over a thousand subscribers now. So there we are. That old chestnut, says Scott Biddy. Sorry, Scotty. That was not funny, says George Raffin. Uh, not particularly, George, no. Uh, my ex was a lazy bism, and I worked all my days, and he done nout. So there you are, uh, says Angie. Well, you know, why do you bother with guys that do nout? Why do women never gamble like men and play cards? Well, they can do. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Miss Potter. And um, Millie, who is the brother of Mr. Warren, who uh, in, gets engaged to Miss Potter. I don't want to spoil it if you haven't seen it. Fantastic film. Uh, Beatrix Potter. And um, she joins them for cards. And the mother's very old school, very old fashioned. said, no, if somebody to make a fourth at, uh, at Whist, I think it was, or at Bridge. And she says, I play rather well, actually. 
and later on when old sir so and so's leaving the house after the party says i suggest madam you take up knitting and the mother said what was that all about and she said um <laughs> and she said i won two guineas off him uh gordon sterling get your bonnet on and please don't mention edinburgh again i hate the festival well it speaks very highly of you gordon sterling and you should never ever hate anything if you hate something you're shutting off an avenue of learning now i'm uh, making uh, there's a disposition a dispensation tonight so the bonnet is not on we could pop it on later and we'll see all women are lazy says alan beard there we are. Quite a statement, then. Uh, Paul Francis Carroll, one of the world's great organists, is watching. Paul Francis Carroll, dinky-doo to you, you fine, fine fellow. And all I can say to you is, swell to great. Get your thumb pistons going, and off we jolly well go. Um, I got rid of him, Scotty, says Angie Thompson. Quite right, Angie. You don't want a lazy bones around the house. Ah, says Paul Francis Carroll. Yes, he understands what I mean by the thumb pistons. So there we are. And you could go on swell to great marvellous stuff. Um, Andrew, that makes sense. Now you've only got your own dish to wash, says Ian Walker. Oh, harsh, savage, Ian. Uh, now, wrong with the first of all. You look better without the bonnet, Scotty, says Sean Finlay. Thank you. I might not wear... I mean, the bonnet came into being because um, a photographer from, I think it was the Scotsman, was trying to get a photo of me at Leith on a winter's night and um i had my bonnet on so there we are so we just kept the bonnet on oh what does that mean i am ruth the myth's equal no says ian walker no no i don't think ruth the myth has any equals ian i don't think that would uh, that would be the one you're a brave man scotty having a go at women whilst on facebook best to keep in with them now i did post today i said ask yourself the question how many Scotty McClue posts have you shared and could you do better? And somebody came on and said, oh, brave, brave. I don't think so. I mean, I think, you know, oi, oi, Carol, says Scott Biddy. All right, Scotty, it's your bin man here. Next time I see you, we'll get you live on the Kunsel Juice page. John Grekel, a very fine chap. John Grolko. How do I pronounce it, John? Grolko or Grekel? There we are. But you are, you are a fine fellow, you are, you are a star. You've no aged at all for years ago, says Richie. I don't think so, Richie. Same man, a little bit heavy around the chops, perhaps. But I'm a bodybuilder, for goodness sake, you know. Uh, I was playing an organ recital at the Cowgate, says Paul Francis Carroll. It would be stunning, Paul, with you. Were you on uh, two manuals? Did you have the top hand on swell? and the bottom hand on great now am i right in thinking on a three manual you've got choir swell and great what would you have on a four manual little test for everybody out there if you know your pipe organs and i know you were working at scott fm says sean finley yes i was mcclure where is bam bam tommy the commie says neil mills jr we haven't heard hide nor hear of Tommy the Commie since the old L107 days. Not a wished, not a peep. I don't think Tommy the Commie will have said ichy or okay, because I can't see anyone putting up with them apart from me, Scotty McClue. Hi, Scotty, I met Jeremy this morning in Musselbra. Splendid fellow, Scotty, says Sandy Howman. Yes, Jeremy is a good guy, but if he wants to be electable, Sandy, he'll need to back independence for Scotland. Otherwise, his party will remain in the wilderness for many, many years. Uh, you need to be on the telly, by the way, says Richie. I know Richie. McClure should be in the telly. I've spoken to one or two of the television companies and said to them, why don't you have a live Scotty McClure show, say on a Friday night, or say every night for half an hour. We need a television company that also does phones, has got access to phones. So there we are. That would be a good idea. I'm thinking I've got a couple in mind. Uh, hi, Scott, you're looking good. Without the bond, scuba. Stephen Barhead. Dinky-doo, Stephen Barhead. Thank you very, very much for that. Very, very much appreciated. Uh, do you have your eyebrows plucked? Scotty, careful there. Uh, Roy Brownlow. Uh, no, no, I don't. That's just my 
that's my bushy, bushy eyebrows. I mean, sometimes we, we tidy them up a wee bit so we don't look ridiculous, you know what I mean? Uh, we don't have the have the Dennis Hillies. Love it, Johnny, says Scott. Sandy Howden, gear up, Scotty. Indy's finished. Sandy, Indy hasn't even begun, right? The joy of Indy. I'm surprised at you because I thought you were a Scotsman, Sandy. And I thought you would see just how much Scotland has been getting ripped off over the last 310 years. I was reading uh, a paper the other day, a Scottish paper, one of the old uh, lefty rags, and it was saying on it, and you'll like this, you'll like this, it was a letter from somebody saying, the money for Scotland comes from Westminster. I thought, yes it does, but before it comes from Westminster, it comes from Scotland to Westminster. And you, of all people, should know that, Sandy. So you gear up. All right, Labour's toast, son. Uh, if you get a TV show, you should call it A Face for Radio. So Margaret Saunders. Margaret, very funny. Thank you for that. But yes, this is what I look like. Right? And if any television company were thinking, I don't think we could hire him with a big the big face, you know. Of course they could, because eventually, like anybody, people are going to get used to it. Who said you should have to be glam to be on the telly? Because most of these glam people can't present television, and their viewing figures are shocking. So there you go. Uh, you can have live phone calls on your Facebook live very easily, Scotty, says John. How's that, John? Tell us, tell us more. Uh, you are Scotland. You are not a puppet, says Keith Weatherston. No, I'm not. Beautiful skin, says Margaret Saunders. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, my natural look. Uh, a bit shiny, actually. Do you know what I mean? We maybe need a wee bit number seven powder just to take the shine off me. In, uh, I used to get made up when I worked for ITV, when I was doing the news, I used to get made up. And you ended up, if you look closely, you had an orange face. It was quite interesting, and purple lips, and uh, I looked the part, I looked it in a bit, you can still see it, I think, on the internet, Scotty McClure reading the news 30 years ago and all that sort of stuff. And anyway, uh, very good, Scotty, that's why I came in when Alfie the Jambo invited me. Good, Alfie the Jambo should invite you. You need to be on here, Sandy. This is your education. Look upon me as uh, the old Workers' Educational Association. You're looking good, Scotty, says Tony. Thank you, Tony. USB mixer and an aux cable from phone to mixer, says John Grolko. Is it Grolko, John? Am I saying it right? Because I could never live with myself if I wasn't getting your name right. Okay? So, what have we got? A, U, a USB cable and a wee mixer. So, I need to get a wee mixer and get going. The lassies still have orange faces and purple lips. No, but wait, I tell you. I used to work for ITV... Well, I worked for ITV in Aberdeen and ITV in the borders and ITV in, in central Scotland. And um, I remember going home on the bus after a shift, the late night bus on a Friday night with a suit and a white shirt and an orange face because I forgot to take the makeup off. I got blethering to somebody, as you do. And uh, then we're away home. So there we are. Gralco, is it John? John Gralco. Mr. Gralco. Have I said it right, John? Uh, good on you, Scotty, says Keith. Absolutely. You look bra for 30, says George Raffin. I do indeed. Right. Let's get these numbers up. Can everybody share, 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 share this broadcast? Uh, so there you are. Nicola will be doing a show at the festival next year like Big Alec when the voters get rid of us as Alfred James Wright. Alfred James Wright, do not be silly. So there you go. Do not be silly. Somebody else would take over. I might take over myself. So there we are. Um, so that's that. It must be the water you're drinking, says Michael McGuigan. That's it, Scotty. John Gralco. Mr. Gralco. Welcome, Mr. Gralco, I say, and dinky do from Scotty McClue. So there we go. We're obviously going to add other broadcast platforms. Um, dare I say it without getting cut off, we do a show on Periscope as well. Now, not a show as such, but I do these Periscope appearances because this, guys, is work in progress. Always remember that. Never, ever, 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 ever give up 
on Scotty McClue. Work in progress. I mean, I don't know how many more Sunday nights we'll be doing, but it's been pretty fantastic. And we are on show number 45 tonight. So there you are. That's it, Scotty. Good, good, says John. Uh, who was the best celebrity you've ever met, says Steve Burrows. Steve, I have met so many famous people. And I'll tell you what really threw me one night. A very, 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 very famous top conductor. And um, I went to see him in the interval. I saw him standing about and I said, can I just say thanks for all the wonderful music? And he said, yes, what is it you do yourself? I said, I'm a broadcaster. He said, what station? And I told him, he said, he said are, you a, are you a manager or um, a DJ? I said, no, no, I, I do a talk show. And he said, um, it's not Scotty McClue, is it? Oh, I can't believe I've met you. Just a moment. My wife will love this. Darling, look who's here. Scotty McClure. So it turned the old thing. It was so amazing. She was actually delighted to meet me. You know, what about that? Uh, I remember visiting BBC Scotland News Studio. Is it true presenters wear makeup because of the heat? The overhead studio lights. It wouldn't look good to be seen sweating on TV. There's an element of that, Tony. I mean, if you're, you know, I get, I get hot. I'm a very hot person. But television lights are very, very powerful. And what happens? You can be sitting as cool as a cucumber with your news stories in front of you, ready to read the news, right? And then suddenly, uh, somebody, will, you know, the the controllers will say to you, the program controllers, because everything you see on television happens because somebody does something all right and you have two big monitors you've got what's on so you have a transmission monitor that's just marked tx and you've got a preview monitor which is marked pv all right so you've got that in front of you um i'm all for you and the snp says keith weatherston hi son says leslie kesson hi leslie how are you my darling lovely to have you with us so they are shared with my friend Scotty. Also, you do a great job. I'd love to meet you someday. Cheers, says George McGlashan. Thank you, George. Very, very much appreciated. I can tell you. I'll tell you that for nothing. Tell you for now. I'll say it for now, as, uh, as we say in Yorkshire. Hi, Scotty. This is Christine Rigg. Lynn Kelly. Yo, Kevin. Sorry. So, back to the television. So what actually happens is the program controller will say to you, uh, five seconds, Scotty, coming to you in five, and then it all goes quiet. So you're four, three, two, one, right? If you're being directed from the floor, then they'll count you in. They'll go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. And then it goes quiet, and you'll see them three, two, one, and then you're cue, and cue. And then that's you. You start, you say, good morning. The news this morning, and uh, all that sort of stuff. Now, as you do that, there is bang, right? And the bang is these massive overhead floods on, all right? So they're on you. And then you feel the heat. A minute or two under these, and you're roasty, roasty, toasty. Yo, Kevin, sorry, says Lynn Kelly. Hi, Scotty. I'm fine, thanks. I've lost you, says Angie Thompson. You can't, Angie. Love listening to you many years ago at night in the radio show. Used to get a good laugh with my mum listening to you. My mum listening to you. Lovely to hear that voice again. Isn't it very, very strange? Voices. You know, we recognise the voice. Scotty, the SNP are giving 620,000 over two years to Pakistan for education. When is aid reserved to Westminster? That's Scottish money, Scotty. Scotland has plenty of money. Let me tell you now, as you know, I'm no political animal, right? But austerity is purely political. There's plenty of money sloshing about Westminster because they did QE, quantitative easing. So the, the places are washed with money. So I'm sorry, I wasn't taken in when Mrs. May said on television there's no money tree. All right, there you go. Uh, hello from Hamilton, says Willie Faulkner. A blast from the past. You're looking good, mate. Now, that would be a conversation, George McGlashan, says Elaine Russell. Aye, we do. Love the show, laddie, says Tobias Niggle. 
Fantastic. First saw you on Periscope. Love seeing you on Facebook also, says David Butts. Dinky do, David. Can everybody share, guys? Share pot, spot coming up. Share, 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 share. Share, 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 share. And if every single one of you can type, right? Type to type to type to type. And tap to tap to tap to tap on your screens. Let's get all these um, thumbs up and all that floating about. Where's your hat today, Scotty? Says Wadge. Wadge, what I've decided to do is divest myself of the hat for tonight. Stick it out. See if you guys can cope with it. And if you can, we might dispense with it because it's actually very hot in the summer. A tweed cap. Yes? Think about it. Do you know, do you know what I'm saying, Wadge? Are you with me, my boy? Do you get the, do you get the picture as I say? Excuse me a wee second. <laughs> There we are. Just uh, take a wee comfort break there. Give myself a mop doon. Uh, you're looking dapper, old boy, says Robert Telford. Dinky do to you, Robert. Shared to 62,000 followers, says John Gralco. You top man, John. That's wonderful. Get them all on here. Everybody on Facebook should be watching this. And if we can't get everybody on Facebook watching this eventually, then what we'll have to do, right? We can even maybe get translation up. I'm pretty sure we can probably get captions and all sorts of things. Did you see the new photo with, uh, I've signed it very coarsely, dinky do. Scottish money for Scottish education, Scotty. Pakistan has a nuclear program, but you know that already. Of course I do, Sandy. You've got to remember, I mean, I can tell you all about freedom at midnight. Lord Mountbatten. Yes, the last Viceroy of India. He was aged 46. Wonderful, wonderful man. People knocked him because they said he was a very proud man, etc., etc. I think he was the great-grandson of Queen Victoria. Was that right? And he knocked her glasses off at his christening. They are. He was born in 1900, same year as the Queen Mother. Wonderful man, Lord Mountbatten. And I have to say... Um, apart from being a terrible, 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 horrific, horrendous um, crime of murder, the people who did that to Lord Mountbatten actually got that very, 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 very wrong. Because what they could have done, he's a man that would have actually understood where they were coming from. He was such a man of the world. He'd brought peace to India. Now, I know that the partition thing was so rushed and millions of lives were needlessly lost. That was bad, bad news. But that wasn't Lord Mountbatten's fault. He brought peace to India, right? He ran the Navy superbly well. After the Second World War, when there was terrific pressure, there was no money like today, and terrific pressure to, uh, to wind the Navy down. And he did that in a very humane way. Right, so he didn't get everything right, but he was a man of peace and he was a socialist. You won't like hearing that, but he was a socialist. And his wife, who was a very, very wealthy heiress, a lovely, lovely lady, Edwina, she was a socialist as well. And I can remember hearing that a conservative candidate knocked on the door of his London flat and he opened the door himself and he said, can I help you? And the chap said, he said, um, I'm the Conservative candidate, and he said, well, he said, you know, my wife and I are not interested in that, but I think my butler wife might be one of your mob. <laughs> the butler was a Tory. Tremendous. Tell 10, tell 10, tell 10, tell 10, says Neil Mills Jr. Keith Waterhouse, peace up your birthday, says Dennis Lafferty. Ooh. It was Churchill's fault, Scotty. You know that also. Yes, uh, Churchill wasn't quite the great man that he was painted, I have to say. He was a great man in his own right, but he did some pretty shocking things when you look back. I can tell you that for nothing. But um, I have to say, I mean, I have no axe to grind, no, nothing to quarrel. But I remember um, going to a naval meeting that night. I wouldn't say any more about that. The night that uh, Lord Mountbatten was, was murdered. And um, it was, it, I just remember us all sitting there, uh, very, very senior naval officers and what have you. It was, it was shocking, 
So there you are. Uh, anyway, I'm sorry, I've just found this stream. Who are you, says Cameron Todd? Cameron Todd, dinky you do. Welcome. I am Scotty McClue, S C O T T I E, M small c, capital C L U E, and I am the world's top broadcaster. I'm very glad you've found us. Spread the word, Cameron. You're very, very welcome. I've been broadcasting for 40 years. 33 years in television and radio, 25 years with the Scotty McClue megaphone ends. We need you back on the radio, Scotty, to take calls, Stevie. I was thinking that today. McClue needs his phones. Now, if I've said it once, I've said it a dozen times. What they need to do, once all the politicians get back and Parliament has been opened up again, they need to discuss having a national phone in either on television or on radio. I will be happy to light the way. I will be happy to front that. I don't mind. If anybody has a problem with me, that's their problem. All right? So I'd be happy to set that up and let them see it working and then do a few years. You know, I mean, I've got a good 25, 30 years of work left in me assuming God willing weather permitting, GWWP, and, um, you know, I'd be happy to front that up, but would you like, every night, on national television, a phone in, with me, Scotty McClue, where you and I talk, if you're talking nonsense, bye-bye. So there we are. I'm definitely liking your page, says Cameron Todd. Thank you very much, Cameron Todd. And also you can go on to YouTube, and you can uh, join us, Scotty McClure's YouTube channel. If you're a business person, you can join me on LinkedIn. Uh, your only duty is to randomly, during the week, share, share, and share, and share everything McClue puts up. Loved listening to you, big man, says Barry Mackay. Uh, Alan William Black, bankrupt, question mark, exclamation mark. Tell us more, Alan William Black. Because we don't know what's going on. Any fash, Scotty, says Graham McKnight. No, I don't have any fash, but I used to work with Hector. Hector Brocklebank. And uh, uh, Hector had the fish. And uh, hey, Hector and I used to do a hond over on the radio. I would do a hond over. Uh, Marvellous stuff. And the audience loved that. You do have a face for Radio Scotty, says Rod Coleman. Very good. Milk for the pussycat, Rod. Lovely, lovely. We'll have a swatch at your coupon and see what we all think. Uh, it's the same. I love listening to you, Scotty. Hello, says Thomas O'Neill. Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome. Spread the word, guys. More sharing. Share, 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 share. Scotty McClue. Let's have lots of thumbs up. Come on. Tap, 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 tap on your screens. So there you are. Um, Chris Ferns. Do you shave your jaws? Yes, I do, Chris. There we are. A very fine, very fine shave there. Uh, loved you back in the day, says Joe Thompson. Thank you, Joe. Dinky do. Lovely to have you. This is even better than listening to LBC, says David Buttery. Well, of course, because it's um, serious, serious broadcasting. It's big, big stuff. And the whole of the world is watching. So there you are. Marvellous stuff. A shout out to my wife, Joanne Gallagher, says James Gallagher. Gone yourself, Scotty, says Stevie Harvey. Uh, fantastic. What happened to your radio, Scotty? Your radio, nothing at all. It's wonderful. A lovely, lovely company run by lovely, lovely people. I would go back there any time, and I'm sure it'd be extremely welcome. We had technical problems with the phones. Because of the popularity of the Scotty McClure show, right and everybody listening watching and listening knows exactly what i mean by that we shorted out the network for central scotland when we started with the scott fm phone in right because the nation had never heard anything like it Four hundred and sixty thousand calls in one week official on the printout from the telephone company and the telephone company phoned and said uh, you know what are you your business they said we're a radio station so what happens at 10 o'clock at night? They said, we do a phone in. Scotty's on. He said, Scotty McClue, that explains it. It's cost £75,000 to fix the network. But obviously, they were going to take the hit. So there you are. Hector Brocklebank, are you up the back of the front? Says, Tracy, Tracy Kilman. Trisha, Trisha, I beg your pardon. Trisha, I do forgive me. Glad to see you back, says Alan William Black. 
I'm doing my best, Scotty. I've only one thumb, says Gerald Mackay Mackay. I know what you mean. I met a gentleman who had two thumbs on one hand. Very interesting. Then real radio came along and ruined everything, says James Gallagher. Well, they changed everything. I mean, they've taken a big, big, big franchise and just sort of that was that. You know what I mean? The game was over. Uh, do you think Scotty could work with... What's that? Leaving Sandy, says Alfred. I don't know what you mean by that. The talk radio stations needed for Scotland. Do you agree, says Tony Mack? I agree very much, Tony. Uh, the thing is, when we've had talk radio stations, it needs to be set up. I mean, I remember working for a talk radio station and uh, nobody came and asked me a single question and I was the only one with proper talk radio experience. Very, very interesting. Nobody bothered. Nobody said, ah, Scotty, you'll know. Scotty will know. Very interesting. I can remember. Um, nobody can. Alfie the Jambo, says Sandy. Are you a big Jambo, Sandy? Are you a Jambo man? Are you, are you maroon for your rune shoulders? Love listening to you, Scotty. We need more, says Lorna Sobolewski. Sobolewski, have I said it right? Lorna, please correct me if I haven't. Very important. Get your names right. Uh, have you a funny story of a call? Yes, Andrew Mackay. I think the funniest call ever was a guy called Brian, and uh, he phoned in, and I took the call, and uh, somebody said, uh, you know, line four's Brian, Scott, is it right, there we go, plop, Brian, come on, I said, Brian, good evening, he said, uh, yes, and I said, how are you tonight, Brian, and he said, angry, very angry, I said, what's making you angry, Brian, you, I said, why am I making you angry, Brian? He said, two hours I've been waiting. Two hours I've been waiting to speak to you on this phone. I said, Brian, I won't keep you a second longer. And cut him off. So there we are. Uh, was he a very naughty boy, says David Butter? He certainly was. Uh, did you support Conor McGregor last night, says Cameron Todd? Um, All right, you dafters, says Stuart Kiddenhead, or Caddenhead. How would you like me to pronounce that, Stuart? So there we are. Andrew Mackay, hello. Talk should be at the top with you, my friend. Cheers, George. Big George. Lovely to hear from you. Fantastic stuff. I like that. Now, while I remember, while it's just at the forefront of my mind, big mind that, IQ of 164. Oh, oh that's oh, a smarty party. A smarty party. Thinks she knows everything. Right, wait to tell you this, right? I could do it with the teeth out. Yes, party pants, yes, yes. Uh, listen, uh, Gordon Sterling, piping happy birthday to your daughter, bless her, who's in Texas. I hope she's okay. And it was her birthday, and you and two of your chums were piping. Very good. Are you the pipe major, Gordon? So I spotted the wee swing at the end, the, the wee pipe major swing there. Uh, so I remember that phone call, says George McGlashan, one of the famous ones. Hopefully not a one-off. We need you back, says Alan William Black. Scotty, what happened to big Bellafy Bothwell? I hope Bellafy Bothwell is all right. She phoned at your radio and we got cut off. So there we are. So the point I was going to make was when I was in your radio, the phones were having a job dealing with the volume of calls and they were tripping out. So there we are. So we need to, obviously needs to be more memory in the phones or something like that. I think networking has killed a lot of local radio. Well, of course it has. Do you think the same? Yes. But there should be big local stations for the big, uh, the big cities. So Glasgow should have a big local station now, owned and run by Scottish people. So they were programmed by Scottish people, and it should be live 24-7. Now, it's possible because I've done it myself on a radio station. And the radio station was working a treat. Unfortunately, we had uh, poor stewardship going on. And the station uh, eventually uh, closed. So that was the end of that. But uh, it was an excellent station. Also remember one of your phone ends. You're talking about getting the canals back to transporting goods up and down Britain to ease congestion of lorries, says Rod Coleman. You're quite right, Rod. We did indeed, and it's still an excellent idea. You see, if you listen to what Scotty McClure is telling you and stop writing him off and go, oh, yeah, he'll know no. He's just, he's just silly. He mucks about all the time. All that nonsense, right? If you actually listen to what I'm saying, canals, you can move a massive amount of heavy goods 
So there you are. And you wouldn't need all the trucks on the road. Very good idea. Um, so there we are. Me and my dad used to love listening to you the way home from work. Brilliant, says Kerry Ann Queen. Where are you listening from, Kerry Ann? Barry Sloan. Wow, Scotty, I used to listen to you when I was 15. Used to put you on and then go to bed. See more. I'd better not see more because I, I once or oh, I touched see more and we lost the broadcast. I'm not going to risk it because everything is so touch sensitive nowadays, guys. So there you are. Bye bye, Scotty. Keep delivering the fosh. The way Hector did, what a legend, Graham McKnight. Dinky do to you, Graham. Lovely to have you with us. Omi Nippath, Scotty, how's it hanging? Scotty, you are a legend, says Alan Doherty. Lucas Clark, see the size of your heat. I know it's a big heat. Should I sit back? So there we are. I remember going to an agent. It's quite a famous agent, so I shan't mention him. I remember going to an agent in 1980, and he said, how can I help you? Uh, after we'd shaken hands and I said I'd like to broadcast please and he said right he said uh, television or radio and I said well both of course but preferably television he said well personally I don't think you've much chance with the big beef face and the tweets right I then went on to work for four ITV stations and 35 mainstream radio stations so that was with a big beef face and the tweets. Thank you for your kind words, Scotty. I'm not a pipe major. Perhaps someday Inverarian District will headhunt me for PM. Inverarian District are a fabulous band. And of course, I can go back to the great Ronnie McCallum, right, who was uh, of the Argyles. And I had the privilege of meeting Ronnie when I was taking shows round Argyle. He came to see us and he was in the audience. So there we are. And it was a puppet show that we were doing. It was Hansel and Gretel. And I was Gretel, the puppet. And I hopped up the puppet on his knee and said, Hello, Major McCallum. I'm Gretel. And he was fantastic. He shook the puppet's hand. What a gent. What a wonderful, wonderful piper. And uh, his, uh, his family, as far as I know, are still involved in piping. Is that a legend or a leg end, Scotty? Ha ha! Alfred James Wright, you're a great man for the wee funnies. We like that. Can you say hello to my lorry driver, Dad, Alex Mack, who's retiring at 70? He's a big fan of yours, says Tony Mack. I hope he has a long and happy retirement, Tony Mack. 70 is young to retire, but probably not if you're long distance lorry driving. Had to go and get the wife off the roof. She's fixing the aerial, says Ian Walker. Absolutely. Can we have another share, guys? Time is passing. Time flies when you're enjoying yourself. What do you think of the nay bonnet look? Are we up for it? Big style. Um, did you also do the one about the caravans taking up the road? Or was that a chorus song I'm thinking of? Lol. No, the caravans taking up the road. We did. We were going to get caravans off the road at one point because they were dangerous. Dangerous, dangerous. Pardon me. I'm in tender hooks, Scotty. I need Real Madrid to win. For a few bobs, says Ian Walker. Well, I hope your bet comes off, Ian. But if it doesn't, that'll teach you to gamble. So there you go. Um, so <laughs> uh, it's actually tent -der hooks, Ian. So far be it from me to educate the great Ian Walker. But it's T E N T. It's tent -der hooks. I think. Um, I think tent -der hooks. Um, so I don't know if it was for hanging up tents. We'll check that out. But there you are. So there's nothing better than McClue to educate you. I can tell you that. And of course, carrying the can. When you think about that, well, I think he's carrying the can for the other flat. Right? Carrying the can. I've had to carry the can a few times. I can tell you. But um, that was the one that carried the jelly night down the mines in the can. Uh, so there you are. Me and my eldest sister. No, sorry. I'll start again. Alan William Black says, me and my sister listen to you while watching the young teams fighting out the front window. Last message for me, or I'll get done for stocking. Class, class to you, Alan William Black. Dinky you do. A very, very warm welcome to all the delegates of the Edinburgh International Television Festival. If you've joined us to watch Scotty McClure, to see the way in Scotland and throughout the world that we are now consuming and watching our television. Now you look at somebody like myself, known to millions upon millions. In fact, there's seven billion people in the world. Is that right? Most of them probably know Scotty McClure. And I've got the big beef face. So you don't need to be glam and you don't need to be a, an 18 year old lassie. 
so there you are, or anything like that. Oh, I've got dodgy fingers, says Ian Walker. Yes, of course, a typo, a typo. Uh, best with the bonnet on. It's too formal without it. Anyway, it's your trademark look, says George Raffin. Class lad, says Willie Ramsey. Good morning, Scotty from Australia, says Erica Mayo. Lovely to have you, Erica. Welcome, welcome, welcome from down under in Oz. Tell me this. See, when you're in Oz, Erica, is, is Scotland down under? I've always wondered, like I've always wondered if there's a guy on stage right now in Tipperary over in Ireland singing, it's a long way to Glasgow, you know. Uh, nice to see a Scott FM legend, says Peter McIntyre. Scott FM was Scotland's finest radio hour. It's never, ever, ever been surpassed. I think something strange must have happened because... You know, we were in danger, I think, of stealing the market from the existing stations. It was such a popular radio station. Ivor Timson's watching. Uh, hi, Scotty, the hottie with the swimmer's body, says Andrew Wagstaff. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate it. Tell me, Scotty, did you used to do the Mr. Martin phone calls on the John Myers phone in during the 90s, says James Fitton. Well, you never know, James. Scotty, back in the day, did you ever jam your finger in the old iron boards? <sighs> yes, that was sore, but it never happened to a woman. No, they know what they're doing. They knew to keep their fingers out the road. They also knew not to say they jumped, jumped their finger. Because if they said, I've jammed my finger in the ironing board, I was going to go, well, that was stupid, wasn't it? That was a silly thing to do. All that nonsense. Uh, whatever happened to wee fat Bob? Who knows? I hope you're well, says Angie McMurdo McCree, a fine, fine lady, a lady I am a huge fan of and have known for many years. Angie McMurdo McCree, I'm absolutely dinky do uh, in, in actual fact, so there you go. It's wonderful. Uh, now, what's that up your nose? It must be you, Andrew. You're getting up my nose. There's nothing up my nose. My nose is smart and it's clean. So there we are. Uh, I hope you're well. Thank you, Angie. And I hope you're well, my dear. And many blessings to you, I say. Lol, says Ian Walker. For goodness sake, folks, we've only got about eight minutes left. So hurry up, hurry up. Share, 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 share the broadcast. I hope everything's going well through at uh, the Edinburgh International Television Festival. So there you are. You can follow Scotty McClue on Twitter. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed tonight's broadcast. This will be a good statutory lesson on how to present live unscripted television without auto cues without scripts without any of that sort of nonsense for an hour solid you know what i mean because i know what you lot can be like going oh god i had to fill for a minute i had to fill i had to fill off the top of my head because the report didn't come in i've done all that i've gone well um well, sorry we haven't been able to bring you that report. We'll go back to that as soon as possible. Uh, Scotty, what about wearing a fez instead of a bonnet? Just like that, eh? Out, says Jay Clark. What does that mean? It was nearly lights out. Yes, absolutely, lights out. Yes, it is, actually. Let me see, what is the time? For goodness sake, I'm having to consult my um, other device. Six minutes, guys, but we don't have to have the full six minutes if you've had... Enough of old McClure. Um, loving the broadcast tonight. We'll definitely tune in again. Laughing out loud here, says Pete Gallagher. Pete Gallagher, that's what it's about. It's a very, very funny show, but I have never, ever, ever claimed to be funny. We get the odd half-witted idiot. The kind of half-witted idiot that if all the village idiots in the world were given their own massive village, would still be the village idiot. And uh, we get people like that on, you know, and um, they, they wonder what's what. And the whole thing about that is they don't realise that I've never said it's funny. They say, you're not very funny. And I say, I have never said I was funny. I mean, I can be an incredibly serious man, you know, because I can remember um, somebody suggesting me, say, Scotty, can I just have a word with you in the quiet? Would you be interested in becoming a board member? And I said, um, well, 
what do you want us to do? He said, well, would you just, would you apply? Because we could really do with somebody like you on the board. Anyway, I applied, right? Now, boards need legal experience and accounting experience. I've got lots of that, right? And anyway, I applied, but then I got knocked back, right? I obviously hadn't sort of what. I got knocked back and someone said, what would he want to be on a board for? He's a broadcaster. Now, did that person actually genuinely think that if you're a broadcaster, you don't have the skills for the boardroom? Do you know what I mean? Very, very strange. Where's your couch, Scotty? You still look good without it. Shout out, Scotty, this is Emma Day. Emma from Sight Hill in Glasgow. Dinky dude, Sight Hill. Loving the broadcast tonight. We'll definitely tune in again. At last I've heard this guy. He's tops, says Robert Cunningham. Thank you, Robert. Of course we are. Neil Mills, Jr. Scotty, have you ever climbed a Monroe? Yes. Get this guy back on mainstream. This is class. Gordon Stilling, Scotty, show 45 has been outstanding. You raised your game for the Edinburgh International Television Festival. It does not get any better. Only minor issue was the absence of your bonnet. Oh, I'm going to try the Seymour. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, all power to you. You are now massive in Texas. Dinky do, Gordon. Fantastic. I went to an Edinburgh Barbers to get a bit off the fringe. <laughs> Very good. Scotty, any more nails for the Waverley? Any more nails for the Waverley? Now, what do you mean for that, for the Waverley? Any more nails for the Waverley? The Waverley, wonderful, wonderful boat. My old friend um, was the chairman of a committee I sat on who, who put the engines in the Waverley, Rankin and Blackmores. Scotty, where do we find you on the radio, mate? Says Robert Cunningham. Social media only at the moment, Robert, until somebody... Wakens up, wakey, wakey, wakey. Let's get Scotty McClue back on the radio. Scotty, I need to study psychology as part of my media studies. Any advice? What does psychology have to do with media? It's vital. Everything is psychology. If you think about it, leadership is getting ordinary people to do extraordinary things, right? And I have a, um, an unusual form of leadership, which somebody put a name on recently, and they said, Scotty, it's servant leadership. And I thought, wow. So there you are. What I tend to do, rather than shout at people and say, Oi, you, get that done now. I'll not tell you again. I don't do that sort of stuff. What I say is, right, I'll get started with this. If anybody wants to help, people go, no, 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 I'll do that, Scotty. I'll do that. The Waverley uh, was in a crash. With the noon, says George. That's a long time ago, George. Shout out to the night shift lads up in Forest. I know Forest very well. I was in Forest just a couple of weeks ago, working hard to build the locals a new train station. Cheers, Scotty. I love Forest. It is beautiful. Beautiful. Enjoying the show in Peterhead, Scotty. Peterhead, dinky do a city up in the Peterhead there, and you can folk fray the brook. You can a git camera folk fray the brook. So there you go. What a stupid place to put a pier. <laughs> so there we are. No more nails. Glue. Defo Tony, says Neil Mills Jr. Absolutely. Keep sharing and sharing and sharing, guys. JP McCusker is watching one of the finest men in the world. So there you are. A gentleman with a wonderful Irish accent. What about you, wee man, eh? What about you, JP? Uh, Saturday, Captain, says George Raffin. Oh, right, right, okay. I've obviously got to uh, update myself with the news. Uh, it was at the weekend, Scotty. Right, there we are. Well, it's a big, big thing to handle, actually. So there you are. So let's just uh, let's just reserve judgment till we hear more. Love your phone in, Scotty, says Robert Cunningham. Dinky-doo, Robert. Lovely to have you with us. What I'll do, there'll be a short pause and then we'll pop up on Periscope for the APRI show as well. So those of you that are on Periscope, uh, follow Scotty McClure. Uh, enjoying the show from Vancouver. I've got 90,000 hearts on Periscope and we haven't even scratched the surface. Uh, enjoying the show from Vancouver, says Andrew J. Higgins. Andrew J. Higgins, are you in Vancouver itself or Vancouver Island? So there you are. Uh, a shout out to Westbury, says Henry Ayers. Yes, Henry. Need to get the social media live. Colin, says Barry Sloan. <coughs> Scotty, you're always a great education. Keep up the great work. God bless, my friend. Yes, 
Everything psychology in the media, very, very important, Tony. So we'll tell you more about that. Uh, dig in, I say. Um, I'm going to Vegas to fight wee Jimmy Cranky. Says Ian Walker. There you go. Very good. Excellent stuff. Or to join in. Tremendous. Only joking, by the way. Um, class, my mum. Loved you. Rip four years now. I'm in Wales now. Oh, you're down in Wales, I see. She used to send me recorded tapes. She even went to a gig and met you. Class. So there you are. <laughs> Darren Gibson, of course. Yes, in fact, what we might do is have another evening with Scotty McClue. So there we are. And we could do it two ways. So there you go. Uh, JP McCusker, I'm off in the morning. Great to hear from you. And two weeks is JP. Always lovely to see your name. Always lovely to hear from you. You are a real top man. You are one of the finest. In fact, I wish I was you. So there you are. Uh, not much damage, just pride, I think. There we are. Uh, sitting in the night shift, watching your show. You can't beat it. And listen to your first radio broadcast. Keep up the good work, says Stephen McNeely. Neil Mills Jr. Scotty, what about John God's radio station? Talk to me radio for a show. I don't know. I would need to speak to John. You can hear John and I. If you go on and put Scotty McClure talks to John Gaunt, G-O-N, about Scottish independence, you'll get it on YouTube. And you hear me talking to John. Um, I mean, John is definitely a great broadcaster. There's absolutely no doubt about that. You know, fantastic broadcaster. Uh, so there you are. Um, how did you get sacked? Uh, so David, <laughs> no, I didn't get sacked. I just didn't get my contract renewed. Uh, so there you are. Uh, so we can look at that. Now, how are we doing for time? My goodness, I think we're actually over time, guys. Yes, we're over time. Time for the song. If you don't like it, then sit back and enjoy every second of it. Are you ready? All together now, the song. Goodbye, everybody, goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody, of wheat, the same or of what and a cheery oh and thank you for a wonderful wonderful show spread the what tell ten to tell ten to tell ten about scotty mcclue live on facebook live the world's top broadcaster saying dinky do just for you have a gorgeous gorgeous week folks take care of your dear selves and remember uh look after yourself because it's a wonderful thing to be you there you are Dinky Doo, Scotty McClure has left the building. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm.